So to go with my D&D campaign I just started, it got me interested in going back and painting some characters, little PC figures for D&D and whatnot, any roll top uh, game. And we're going to do this video slightly different rather than doing the standard voiceover work because when painting guys like this, I just kind of pick whatever color I feel like rather than doing uh, the same colors over and over and over again like I would for an army. And when it's just one figure stopping and writing down everything I'm using and is a little tedious. So we're just going to go with the flow and hopefully we can get this all done in just one single evening. So we have a Reaper figure here. This is a Ranger. I don't know the, his exact name. I'll, it'll be in the title. But all primed black as usual and we're starting off with some Vallejo flat earth on his padded armor. Next got some game colored leather brown. And if you're not knowing what colors to highlight brown with, this is always a, a good combination I fall back to quite a bit. Either I go to just straight off highlighting one to the other or I'll mix them in. I'm going to start by mixing them because I don't know exactly what color I want. And then if it's not enough, I'll uh, switch to just the straight leather brown. So trying to get a little bit of highlight here. I'm gonna be relying, yeah, gonna be relying on a lot of washes on this guy because he has a whole lot of details or items, I should say, on him, especially on his back. Now that's not quite enough highlight, so. I'm just going to go ahead and finish up with this, but then I'm going to have to put the straight game color leather brown on. Alright, about 30 seconds later, so switching to just the game color leather brown now. That previous layer just leaving as a little extra highlight, not one that I planned on. But again, the good thing about doing one off figures like this. I could experiment, stuff like that. If I was painting 10 of these guys, I would have to go back from the, the beginning and um, basically cancel out that previous mixture I just did. Because if I'm painting 10 of them, I, won't, I don't want to have to do that mistake nine more times. Now we're moving on to game color Plague Brown. Again, it's a very good tri-color of browns that I use quite often. I'm only going to do a little bit of this because I don't want this armor too light. It is going to get darkened slightly when I put the wash on, but I'll tell you a little secret. This is the second time I painted this guy because uh, it's halfway done and then I sat on a shelf for about a week and then it's hard to, for me to go back and painting something once it sits around because after looking at it I want to make changes so I decided to start again and I made this leather armor way too bright the first time around I didn't like it. it just stood out too much so I don't want to make that same mistake again. So just a few spots where it's sticking out. That's it. Got some slightly thinned brown ink. Vallejo brown ink off the side here. And we're going to do this twice, first of all. Slightly overall shade. Mainly concentrating, uh, well, mainly concentrating the cracks here, but if it gets all over, I'm okay with that. So as I did say previously, I do want this to be a little darker. You know what? Plan B. I don't like that brown. So I'm just going to wet my brush a whole bunch. Thin it down. And then absorb it. 
back off the miniature. And this works fine, I just gotta be careful not to soften and take off the paint that I already did. Let's try this again with some sepia. I think I'll like that color better. The brown is a bit too red. Okay, plan B. Going to sepia now, slightly thinned. And the reason why, there we go. The brown ink, flail brown ink, has like a little bit of red in it. The sepia has more of a bit of a yellowish, almost greenish tone to it. More yellow than green, but a lot of browns have greens in them. But it matches better the yellow that was in the brown that I just used. So again, trying to put it all over, mainly concentrating on those little, between the little ridges here. That's about it. Let's let that dry for a minute and move on. The one good thing about the horribly hot and humid weather that's been slowing my painting down recently is that well, it's actually, it's actually more of a bad thing, but it dries out the paint really fast, but means you can paint a lot quicker. Because the paint on the figure, as well as your palette, dries out really fast. So, don't have to wait long for that first wash to dry. And now I'm going over it with a thicker sepia ink, less thinned. I was going to add black to it, but don't need it. Because the thicker works just fine. And we'll add a little blotching to areas where I want a bit more shade, along with putting it in the between the little puffy ridges. Boom, there, armor done. Let's move on. On to the cloak. And decided I want to paint it red, a very dark red. So starting off with Vallejo model color black red. And this is going to be our base color. Rather than building up from darkest to lightest, which means I would start by mixing some black in with this color, I'm starting off with the base color because this is a very flat, mostly flat surface area, especially on the back here, which means that the shade color is not going to be staying in too many places. And since it's big gaps, it's easier to go in there afterwards and paint the shade by hand. And then in the smaller recesses we can use a wash. So it helps speed things up a little bit. Now we've moved up to Vallejo Red. It's Vallejo 9 to six red because they have a different, couple different colors called just red. It's a very flat red, a little muddy, but it's dark and it's what I want. So using it as a highlight for the most part because I do want this dark and I am going to put a couple layers on to build it up just slightly. And then we'll follow up with one more highlight of what I don't exactly know what know yet. Now I've mixed some little game color uh, scruffulous brown. What is this stuff called? Scrofulous brown. There, that's an orangey, orangey yellow color. It's not my usual color for highlighting red, but I don't want this thing getting too red. I want dark red, so if I add like flat red to it, it'll just become brighter. And I don't want it brighter, I just want a lighter a highlight for the red I already did. And I'm just doing this on the top of the ridges and on the ends of the big folds. 
So I don't want to do it, for example, like on, I don't want to do this whole thing here, just a little bit. Because since this color is now not really too red anymore, I don't want to overdo it because then the cloak's not going to look red. And the highlight color will no longer be the highlight color, it will be the base coat. Which, I mean, that's exactly why you don't want to over highlight things put the highlights everywhere because then it starts you know you change your base cut co base color I think we're gonna have to do one more highlight on this though just on the very edges because I am doing this a bit more than I originally planned but it, it is a nice color I've added a bit more of that same brown to the previous color I just did. And now just a few small highlights here and there. Since I did go a little bit overboard that previous one with that previous color. That's about it. So, there we go. Got some nice highlighting there without going too far into the bright red territory. Now I have a mix of brown and black ink. Brown with a little bit of black. And gonna take care of the recesses. And I'm not doing an overall wash, I'm trying to paint it in the recesses. You can use an ink wash like a paint, you know, apply it where you want it to go. Just like I was, you know, painting brown and brown and um, black paint mixed together. But since it's an ink, I can do both here. I can do an overall wash in a few spots or painted on and because it's an ink and it's a thin it's very easy to blend in so I could go along an edge here and just let the wash flow through or like I did here try to darken the previous color I just messed that up slightly because the one I just did wasn't dry yet but I can go around and do the rest of the cracks crevices and then go back and do another coat here once all that dries to darken it up even more. Layers, it's all about layers. Though it has to be totally dry, if I do it just like I did here, if I do it when it's still wet, it's gonna peel off, literally peel off that previous layer. So, again, luckily for the horrible heat, that's only gonna take a minute to dry. A little too much in that little hole there. The cloak's not done yet. It still needs a couple more layers, but while it's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to something else on the miniature to save time and speed things up. So, the good thing about painting indi individual minis is you can reuse colors on your palette since you, know, you don't have a guide you're following. So I just put some Flejo Model Air Steel and mixed it with a little of the black ink that I already had and I'm painting in the chainmail and using the black ink instead of black paint ink helps keep the paint thin it makes it easier to get into all the little chainmail nooks and crannies although hmm no that's okay I want this dark and that's a almost too bright, but I think I'll put a couple washes on it when I'm done. And that'll be good. And we'll just do a couple quick highlights here, mix in a bit more steel. A little bit more steel. Don't want it too bright. Let's do a quick... Quick brush swipe here and there. 
that's about it. And then a couple ink washes and that'll be done. Now I can go back to the cloak and finish that up.